TYT Supreme Court time. All right, the court is in session, and this involves Stephen Phillips, who was wrongfully convicted of 10 rapes back in the 1980s. Now, at the time, he had been married Not for... Not guilty. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> okay, I'm There's sorry. more to the story. Okay. Now, at the time, he had been married for less than two years uh, to a woman by the name of Tracy Phillips, and uh, after he was wrongfully convicted and sent to prison, she did whatever she could to get him freed from prison. Now, according to what Stephen Phillips says, she visited him for about three years, and then after three years, they kind of grew apart. Um, and then they eventually got a divorce in 1992. Now, 24 years later, he has been exonerated. A DNA test indicated that he did not, in fact, rape those 10 women. Um, and as a result, the state of uh, Texas granted him uh, a, a huge settlement, $6 million. Mm -hmm. Now. His ex-wife decided to sue him for a chunk of that money, and a judge ruled that she would be awarded $150,000. But Stephen Phillips is going to appeal that decision because he feels that since they had been divorced for 17 years, she did not deserve a dime of that money. So, uh, Tracy Tucker, she got remarried by the way, guilty or not guilty? So this is interesting, right? So he gets a $2 million lump sum, and the rest of the $6 million is going to come in $11,000 monthly payments. Yep. Uh, and uh, he deserves it. I mean, they threw away the key for 24 years on something he didn't do. Now, look, she was a good wife to him for a while. She says that he wanted to divorce her, and she stood up for him the whole way. And uh, the money they earn in the marriage, they sh are supposed to split 50-50, right, roughly speaking. Uh, there could be some variation of that, but that's the general rule. Mm -hmm. uh, and in a sense, this was money earned during the marriage, right? Not all of it, but at least the time that they were married. Mm -hmm. So, believe it or not, I'm, I guess I might be leaning a little bit in her direction. So, I, I don't know if I could say I'm leaning in her direction, but one argument that I would like to make is they were married for a little less than two years. Uh, they had just had a child, they have one son, and they had just started a new business together, okay? And her financial well-being was dependent upon him. She needed him to be there to help her run the business. Now, since he was wrongfully convicted, it not only affected his life in a negative way, and of course he deserves that money and he deserves the vast majority of that money, but it also impacted her financial well-being in a negative way. So I actually think the state should pay her something because of what they did to her now, and, are, and her son. But that's too easy. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. The state should give money to her and her son and, and not take it away from the poor guy who they imprisoned all that time. Right. But they're not going to. So the question is, do you take it from him or don't you? And of course, the opposite side of this is like, really? I've been in prison 24 years? I've been married to you in what, how long, 17 years or something? Right, and now you're gonna come get at me for, oh no, oh, well you were in prison making all that money. Dude, I was convicted of rape I didn't commit. 10 of them, right? It's not like I was having a hunky-dory time in prison. So, and they were married for about 12 years. Um, so, uh -huh. and, and remember, uh, they got married, or I'm sorry, he got convicted in 1982. They got divorced in 1992. So uh, he was in jail, or prison, I should say, for 10 years while they were married. Right, and 14 years he uh, was divorced from her while still in prison. Yes, okay. yes. All right, now that we have the math right, let's go to Justice Jackson and Justice Godoy. This is a tough question. Uh, now, look, uh, I think mainly we're talking about the money, the time that they were married, and he was in prison. Okay, he, she obviously gets nothing for the 14 years mm -hmm. where they were divorced. She held him down for 10 years. That's the thing, you know. And I don't know who knows what she was doing at times. Who knows? But she had his back while he was in there for a while. I don't know if she started doubting his innocence, even though he's probably telling her. But um, she gets a small amount. She doesn't need half of it or anything like that. It's not like one of those yeah. kind of cases. Right. But throw a little something. She went through. She, she went through a suffering over. The, uh, the wrongful conviction. Yeah. yeah, and she didn't get anything close to half. Remember, it's $150,000 out of $6 million. Right, now, the lump sum was $1.2 million, so it's a little over 10% of that. I don't know, it sounds just about right. I mean, in the beginning, you want to say nothing, right? Because, like, come on, man, get off his back. By the way, he gets out of prison, gets the $6 million, everybody's all over him. Yep. There's, like, lawyers, who are who's one guy's trying to get a million dollars from him, other everybody's suing him. He's like, for Christ's sake, man, leave me alone. 
Like, it's a different kind of prison. He's, he spent $300,000 on legal fees already. Yep. yep. Right? God, people have no mercy. I feel They're terrible like, oh, man, oh, 24 years in prison, and everybody thought you were a rapist all that time. That's really bad. I'm suing you. Right? God, people are sick. But in the, when you break it all down, I think we might actually be unanimous. It looks like we're unanimous. Look, she was in that marriage for 10 years, and she did help him in different ways. And by the way, she stuck up for him at trial significantly, and he still thanks her to this day for that, no matter what their differences are, even though he's trying to appeal that $150,000. He does grant her that. I say, not guilty. Let her keep the $150,000.